Ah, the inspector is here. Hello, girl. The engine mounting inspector. Day two of replacing the timing chain on my mum's Hyundai i10. If you haven't seen part one, it's on the channel already. In this video, Dad and I are going to continue to replace that timing chain in the car. Aha, good morning. Hello, mate. <laughs> Day two then of working on the Hyundai i10 and putting the timing uh, chain on it. You've been busy this morning. Uh, you said you weren't going to do anything, but you have. You've drained the oil. Yes, mate. And you've also what, jet washed all the parts that we took off yesterday. Yes. Apart from the alternator, obviously. Um, I, I want to address there. something. Fire away. So I put a video on uh, TikTok yesterday uh, of the Napa timing chain kit that we bought. Oh, yeah. Um, and it's had some very, very bad feedback. That's a concern. Not, not, the, not the fact that our video was naff, but the fact that we're putting in a naff. <laughs> Are you sure? Well, yeah. A lot of people genuinely commented... So our video was really naff. <laughs> ...commented how bad the Napa timing chains are. Yeah. Uh, which has worried me, but you're, you know, glass half full sort of person. Um, we can't do it about the bugger, can we? <laughs> we can't, no. Um, so we're going to fit it, and if it's no good, we'll fit a genuine one, won't we? Um, but at the moment, we are still forging ahead with our Napa timing chain. Here it is. Uh, let us know in the comments below any concerns with Napa. Um, just I want, I want, anybody that's got some good reports, tell yeah, me the good tell ones. Tell us about the good yeah, stuff. I just don't want to hear the bad stuff. There's the gasket um, from the head. Uh, well, the rocker cover. Um, how's that looking? Come off all right? Well, we ain't got another one, so it's going to have to go back. There it? you go. Uh, best uh, practice. Of course it is. Put a new one on. Of course it is. Of course right, it what's is. what's the plan then? So we I'll tell you what we're going to do, son. I've yep. got the oil drained. Yeah. And it did cross my mind. Shall I whip the sump off to have a look at the strainer? Yes. Then I thought, that'd be a silly thing to do, wouldn't ah. it? See so if we can see the blinking thing oh, I'm not, but i'm not going to play silly idea. beggars too much i want to get this done today so you've got the little inspection camera i'm assuming you're going to stick it in the sump hole and see yeah. if you can see the strainer uh, have you got any concerns about I don't know. the oil strainer I, I, what i've been really hoping is overnight somebody that somebody that is very familiar with these yeah. e.g somebody that's been working on them for the last 15 years yeah They'll come and say, tell us what you need to look out for is, yeah, I've heard that before, no, this sort of thing. Not had all that. But I'll tell you one thing we do need to say. What? We need to give a big shout out to Leon, who has sent us on PDF format oh, yeah. overnight <laughs> the, uh, from the proper manual how to do this job. I've got, well, I printed the instructions off his yes. centres. So but the, the, the bits with, that. With the torque rate settings, and it's confirmed that how we're fiddling about, we're going on the right track. But the so. bits that Leon sent us are useful, right? It certainly, yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Right, so inspection camera is coming out. <laughs> yeah. We're going to stick it in the sump, see what we can see. Right, so we're in the sump now. We can have a look well, inside. Well, this is, we can't see. Oh! Yeah, that'll be the bearing ladder and what have you. No, that's not helping us, is it? Well, that was quite fruitless, actually. A waste, of, a waste of five minutes, that was. Couldn't really see anything, but you're not concerned. Yeah, really good being concerned, isn't right. it? Right, good. Let's set this cover off. So what's the next part? Take the uh, chain cover off, yeah? Yeah. I see the alternator is on the floor down there. Well, it sort of fell off during the night. Because <laughs> <laughs> there's some blinking awkward bolts around there. So the alternator is now yeah. off. Well... That there, it's because the workshop manual, what I've seen, isn't very clear. But so we're going to take this back of the water off. pump. There's the thermostat housing. They see that there. That's the thermostat housing, and it's. I think it's on an O-ring there, and it's on an O-ring. Some O-rings here. Yeah. So we may have to source some O-rings from our O-ring stock. Why do we need to take that off? Because it's fastened to the cover. Look. Oh, I see. And that's why I took the alternator off because there's nut there. Behind the alternator. Well, for the sake of and there's what, a bolt round there. Four bolts and getting the alternator out. It wasn't a big job, was it? Uh, the alternator was off, really. It was just fastened by the wires, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So we're going to support the engine. Yep. So it's time to take the engine mount off. Uh, we've got to jack the end up, engine up and support it while we take that off. You've got some board and some kingspan foam there. I'm yeah, guessing that's I just to protect yeah. the sump, is it? it? Looks a bit tilly, really, that sump does. So we'll yes. have some protection on it. Best uh, best practice is not jack anything up by the sump. It's not so much that, it's just that uh, 
if you crease it up, it pushes the sump against the strainer. But that should be. You're not taking all the weight of the engine. Just no, just supporting that. it. As you can see, not much weight on there. So the engine mount is now off. Obviously there's more engine mounts on the car, but that is the one that supports this end of the engine. Jet wash, jet wash your engine mounting while you've got it off. It can be and as you can see, Dad's uh, cleaned all these parts this morning as well. Elbow grease, degreaser, and a jet wash. They're drying whilst we're uh, messing about. Ah, the inspector is here. Hello, girl. The engine mounting inspector. Good morning. You're all right, ain't you, mate? Keeping an eye on things. Yeah, you look after the stuff, won't you? Make sure nobody nicks our bits. So, mighty boy. Well, now the workshop inspector is here, making sure everything's okay. What can you see? <laughs> oh. What do you oh. think? <laughs> it's broken. <laughs> There's a knobhead with a camera, Grandad. <laughs> Don't fit a napper chain. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at you, Napper. <laughs> that bugger is tight. Should he have loosened that before he took the engine mount off? Yeah. Sure nobody wants to see me taking a flipping bolt out. That tinker is tight. So at the moment we're removing these big bolts, Ooh. which uh, fit into the cover and into the block. There's about six of them. Once they're out, the cover should come off. Took them awkward buggers out from the back. In theory, the cover should be free, but before we start smacking it and pulling it, mm. we're gonna just make sure we've got all them bolts out. Yes. Right. That's come loose, that is. No, 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 love tap. And then. There it is. Don't move the light then. Don't bugger off with the light. There it is. And it comes. We actually had a, quite a lot more bonding on there than we expected. Yeah, no, it and, the, and the thermostat housing was causing us grief. But it's off. What do you reckon? Let's have a look. Right, so that's the oil pump. So now we can see the timing chain. It's in those guides there. Yeah. And you've noticed something about the oil pump sprocket. Yeah, just tell just, us about that. Well, the oil pump lives in that front cover look. Let's have a look. And it's driven by them two notches there, look, right. so you've got to line them up and there put and it there. together. Can you see it's got them bloody yep. marks? I can. To tell you where to put the bugger when you put it together, look. There, look. So there must be another O-ring there. So you've just taken an O-ring out of the end of the engine with your pick. Yeah. Um, hopefully we've got some O-rings in stock. If not. Uh, if not, we're going to have to reuse them. Um, let's see if there's any more. Should be another one, sort of. Yeah, it's in that thermostat house, and we'll leave that for now, it's safe. So just talk us through what we can see. I'll We've got the variable I'm valve there. timing pieces here that we could see, mm -hmm. and the top of the chain. We've got some guides in here, and then the, and then the chain itself. Yeah, see the instructions say, when you take that... Oh, that tension is a long way out. I'm going to see if I can get my camera in the engine. i just shine that in. So now we can see inside there. Just talk me through what the tensioner is, what it does, because I'm an idiot. It's got a spring in it, but it's also got oil pressure on it. Yeah. And, and what does that do? It puts tension on the chain. Puts tension on that that thing there. Let's have a look. Which bit you talking about? That plastic thing there. Yes. The, the instructions say you squeeze that with your pliers and that will go back in. So you say it's a long way out, you mean the actual pin? Yeah, it looks is, to be a long way out. It's so a long yeah, way out. It does. Which could... But the instructions say you put your little pin in to retain it. 
and this hasn't got one, and the new one hasn't got one. So I wondered if they've been, the instructions are uh, wrong. Well, it's not so much wrong, but things have changed. Yes. So the that tensioner being out quite far, yeah, indicative that it's stretched. I, if we don't, if we if it ain't stretched, we're wasting a bugger in time, aren't we? And how will we know if it's stretched? I suppose I could measure it, but I'm not going to fanny about. I'm just going to put a new one on in a minute. So it's time to take the chain off. Yeah, I'll just take this back guide off first. It's best practice, I'm assuming, to uh, replace those guides at the same time. Yeah, you'd be a mug not to do. What we're doing is actually the bare minimum. But let's face it, if them things are making a noise, we're screwed, aren't we? Why would they make a noise? Because they go faulty inside. So there's not a lot of wear on that. Not a lot of wear on that, son. Aha! The chain is off. Yeah. If he's putting it back, you'd have marked it because you can't see the marked links very well now. There's one there, look. No, you can see them just. They're sort of a gold colour, aren't they? Yeah, you can, can just see the marked links, look still. Can you see? Yep. Different, one there and one there. Is but we're it? not putting the chain back. No, unless this is worse. <laughs> mm. And we put the bug back on again. Well, if it is worse, we go down to our local Hyundai garage and buy a genuine chain for 20 quid. We? Yeah, we. Because you'll need a lift there. <laughs> Touch wood, I have a Piogut. Oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. We should have got an apprentice. I'd leave him to do that. <laughs> Does that take all the old sealant off? Yeah. <laughs> no, no apprentices here. Only production crew. I've decided that Hyundai i10s are not very good for content. Then there was that. Because you can't really see much. Second guide's off, how's that looking? Can't see any wear on it, me old mate. Let's compare the old chain to the new chain, see if we can see any great difference. Not a friggin' skerrick. In fact, I reckon the new chain's longer than the old one. Can't see a difference, can you? Let's have a look. I can't see a difference. Uh, you're right, the new chain is longer. So there you go. Great times. Genuine question. Yes, John. If we do all this and it makes it worse or doesn't fix it, what's the plan? I don't know. Are we living with it? Keep at it until we find it, don't we? Just tell us what you're doing now. I'm cleaning all that sealant off this face, mate. Uh, what are you using? Uh, plastic pan. scraper. Yep. Sometimes for an awkward bit, I've got a metal scraper to go in the holes yep. and some fine scotch bright. And it's really important to do that to get a good seal yeah, back on oh it yeah. when you put it back on, eh? Indeed, mate, indeed. Bit of a thankless task, that. Yeah, it's a ball ache, to be fair. A ball ache of the highest order, but it's got to be done. You need an apprentice. You do. That's just what I need. So that's nice and clean. Time to do the same, but with this bit. At least you can get at this tinker. If this doesn't fix the problem, what are we going to do? We? <laughs> we? Uh, it's, it's, I'm going to do something else. It saddened me a little bit that yeah. a car of such an era, so a relatively modern car, yeah. we are putting aftermarket parts a nine-year-old car. Yeah, but you see, you've got the original tensioner there, original Kia Hyundai yeah. tensioner, original guides, original chain, Oh, hey. And we're not putting. Well, you've got to remember, my employer don't pay me very frigging well, so I, I can't afford to spend out on the. I thought you was retired. I thought you was living off the uh, the sweet, sweet pension part. Oh no! <laughs> Seeing as this latest government decides to call the stuff I've been paying into since I was sixteen year old. Oh no, that's a benefit. I think it's a. Benefit when you've not been paying into it for 16 years, for, for 50 years. And then you get it. And, and then well, you still get it. Remember, no politics on the channel. Um, I think I would prefer us to be doing a K series engine this morning. Than Too this. bloody right, son. But we ain't got one done because we've we did, we fixed it for, in the end. Well. 
I need another one. That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing. I think you want to go and... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what we need. An MGTF. Tell you what you want to do. If you get one of them, John, <laughs> you'll be a silly man because they're horrible to work on. Never again. Never again. Right, so once that's all scratched off, we're going to, I'm guessing, clean it all out. Degrease it, jet wash it. And have um, a cup of tea, I think. Yeah, too bloody right, son. Jet wash! Well, cup of tea time over, and it's time to crack on with the project. What are you doing now? Putting that front guide on. Oh, right, okay. So, what well, the new one, obviously, from the kit. Um, have you secured that down with anything, or is it just bolted into place? I didn't say you was locked tight. So you've bolted that into place there. Guide number one is in. It's now the important time, which is put the chain in place. That's not on there. Yeah, that's on there. That's on. Mark there, mark there. It's so the chain is loosely hung on. Can you just explain to us the fitting coloured process? Coloured links to the marks, mate. So let's have a look. So on here is a coloured link. A coloured link is sort of a goldy colour. And you can see here is the markings on the top here and here, and you've aligned them up, yeah? yeah. Why is it important to do that? You've got to get your valves working in the same right, right place towards the pistons. Okay, so make sure you've uh, lined it up correctly. Time to fit the next guide. 11, so that's 10, isn't it? Just show me what you've got there. What's, what's that, a, a torque chart? It's just a picture of the torque wrench settings. So there. torque wrench settings for those guides. So that bolt there through that guide. What is he doing there? Putting, I'm just priming the tensioner. Okay. With it works with oil more. pressure. Well, it's got a spring in it, but apart from that, when the engine's running, it pumps oil in there to put pressure on it. Okay, so it's good That's practice That's why you to don't wind the drive engine drive backwards, because there's no oil pressure on it. On goes the tensioner. Does the tensioner automatically set itself, or do you have to push it back and, and set it? It's, it's, well, it's got a clip on it that holds it back, and when I've got it all sorted out... You didn't answer me question. What's that? Do you set it to a specific... No, it sorts itself out. Thank you. We've checked everything, we've tightened everything up, you've made sure I haven't forgotten anything. Yeah, everything has been talked up. Yeah. What's next? Take this clip off. Okay, show me the clip. What's the clip on? Is it on the, uh, the tensioner? Yep. Yep. Out it comes. Don't leave the clip on then. I don't think you would do with a cover. Hey, we've just been offered a free project. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, which is a 1989 Lotus Esprit. Cool. Uh, I'm guessing we're not taking on that project. <laughs> Somebody a lot younger than me needs to do that. You don't fancy a Lotus Esprit? I don't fancy any projects, thank you. So this is the old yeah, I'm just going to... um, tensioner. You're going to try and wind it back, are you? Um... Oh, squelchy. There it is. So you've pushed it back using the clip and the vice. It doesn't look very worn, does it? No, I think we're wasting our time. we put the new O-rings in. O-ring time. Durco. So that is... High temperature silicon sealant. The silicon sealant. Are you going to put that on the O-rings, or round the O-rings? I'm going to put a slightest little bit, just to stick them in. Is that good practice, bad practice? I don't know. Um, Alan Milliard does it. Oh, well. If it's good enough for Alan Milliard, it's good enough for Peter Cowopland. This is not normal. Normally, I'd be. It looks like the O-ring is a special O-ring with some locating tags. We're having to reuse the old O-rings. Um, no new O-rings in our kit, and as Dad said, they're a funny size. They're sort of they're quite slender in comparison to the ones we've got. Yeah, they look like 
special thing. But they're not broken, they're not worn. Mm. Not best practice. Just but... don't put too much jolly on though, just a little tiny bit. Just a little tiny bit. The special O-rings look. Oh yeah, they've, they've got, got a little, little, tag, little tag on. The special things. Someone has actually used one of these timing chains and not had a problem. I did look on some forums and some Americans with a Nissan says that they're not our interest with them. With their big trucks. Well, if it's no good, it's no good. It's not the end of the world. The worst thing is, that, you know, it just doesn't stop the noise and we've, we've done the wrong thing. Thermostat housing is going back on. Let's get the uh, cover, see what we're dealing with here. Show us your cover then. Oh, that looks good. Well does, mate. This is the cover now, so you're going to put some Durco on there, are you? Well, I'm going to put a little bit on there, only a very little amount. I'm going to put loads around there. It says you've got to put a bit on the head. So we've just double checked everything, made sure it's all okay, made sure it's all talked up correctly. Uh, make sure the O-rings are in properly before we put the cover back on. Not using no nonsense bathroom sealant. You've been down to screw fix and got some bathroom sealant. <laughs> I'm assuming you can use too much of that stuff. You jolly well can, Robert. It needs to be like a continuous bead, though. Yeah. And it gets all in your engine bits. And your mum here, she's good at icing cakes. Can you see how it's got like a channel that stops that getting in them important places? I can. Right, so it's time to put the cover back on. Um, any particular way of doing this? You've got to line the oil pump drive up. There's some marks on the cover though. All the damage the crank seal putting it on. Lots of the old jollop there. That's that there. Guiding that on there. There's nothing trapped there. What's stopping me going on at the back? No, it's just too far forward. The love tap worked then. It's popped it back on. <laughs> Sat on the dowels. The Durco just needs cleaning off. Where well, we've got it on the uh, Ralphie Customs says bits love and pieces taps. on there. Are you um, on a secondment to Ralphie Customs, or are you getting well, getting paid by of, Ralphie Customs? He's the sort of chap I sort I of see. I I've worked with in the past. You shouldn't be plugging other people's channels. You see this here? What's that? This is a star, star, star bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put these star, star, star bolts in. I've worked with many men like Ralphie Customs chap. Good hearted fella will do out for you. In go the bolts. I don't know whether he likes pork pie or not, but he lives near Melton Mowbray. I'll tell you one thing, well, if he doesn't like pork pie, I <laughs> certainly do. Put a food. I bloody love a pork pie right now. <laughs> Must be about seven months since I've had a pork pie. I don't think my diet allows for pork pies now. No. Although, I did have a kebab and cheesy chips this week. Well, I think a pork pie would have been better than that crap. It, um... It was the necessary of two evils. More bolts going back in, making sure we've not missed any. <laughs> and they can be tightened up. It's pretty much now the reverse of taking it off. We've done the important bit. In go all the bolts on the cover. There's blooming loads of them, so make sure you've got them all in. If you need to reference the case torque settings, here they are. Pause the video now. Right, so the cover is back on. It is, car. yes. Yes. What was the worst part about that? Just getting all the bolts in, really. Yeah. Um, 
once it was on, it was on. As you say, it was on. Now it's time to put the water pump back on. Hang on a minute, you're putting Durco on there. Is that yeah. is that is that the right thing to do? No. Good. Don't ever do this. Bad practice. Bad man. Don't do this. You are desperate for a Hyundai slash Kia expert I am. to interrupt their bank holiday Monday. And tell you, I know what that bugger is, mate. Tell you what that is. What's heard, wrong? I've heard dozens of the buggers. I've heard dozens of them. It's nothing to do with what you've done. anything you've touched. It's a little switch over here. It I did cross my mind it might be the solenoids. Rattle somewhere. It did cross my mind it might be the solenoids. We've received some criticism on TikTok, so I'm not oh, that bothered. I'm sorry about that. Uh, to suggest that we should have had the problem properly diagnosed. Yeah. Uh, as you say, oh. we took it to Hyundai, and they went, no idea, mate. I so said, never heard one like it. Then I looked on some forums, and they says there is a problem with the timing chain on some models, and they say it's not a problem as such, it's just that they make a flipping noise. But it's very, very vague. Next to go back on is the crank pulley. Just get the little round key peg thing. This little key way look. Yep, so you can't get it on the wrong way. No, because it's your timing marks would not be right with the... You've put some Vaseline on there. I have, mate, yeah. Is that just to help it slide on? Yeah. What are you showing me? Your timing marks on TDC. There's a T mark on the case and a, a mark on the pulley. Right, let's have a look. Oh, yeah. That looks good to me, Gromit. So there is the timing mark and there is the T. What does the 10 next to it denote? 10 degrees before top 10 centre. Oh. I'm guessing it's to check the timing. So it's in the right place anyway. So while oh. I was on the floor having a look at that, you were trying to tell me something. What were you telling me? Yeah, we're going to put the, oil, put the oil filter on, put some oil in it, so while I'm peddling about turning the engine over, it'll be starting to prime itself. Ah, good idea. So while I'm peddling about, I'll be doing something useful. So oil filter primed. I don't know, mate. Right, there we go. Oh. In goes the oil filter. Oil going in. Three litres to start with. We can't do it properly because the car's jacked up and on the wonk. Um, you've got a top tip because you've made a bit of a mess. Yeah, don't leave the uh, TDC sensor out when you're trying to fill it up down the bum in the cam carrier. Yeah, she'll end up with oil all on the floor. Don't do that. Top tip. Time to turn the engine over. So now you're going to turn the engine over. Just tell us why you're going to do that. Make sure there's no broken. And so it works. Turn it over twice. Yeah, because it's a, the cam runs at half speed, so it will, after two turns, it'll be back where I started from, won't it? Does that make any sense? It does. So it should be coming up soon. Can I just get this dirt off here? Yeah, you shouldn't put your fingers in there, buddy. You shouldn't put your fingers in there. That's the last place you want to put your fingers. Even if it is only being turned over. That's about right. There you go. Now I'm going to get this deck off. You're good man. Oh, it's all stuck and all sorts. I shouldn't worry too much. It's not going to cause a problem then. So you've turned the engine over twice, <laughs> nothing seems broken and it's lined up. So you've written the torque setting down yes. for the crank pull. Is it crank pulley? Yes, son. Um, what is it? Well, I've given a big range of 55.9 newton metres to 61.8 newton metres. And what percentage? Plus 38 degrees to 42 degrees. Oh, so 40 degrees, eh? Yeah. Yeah, bugger! I mean, that's a different kettle of fish there, Gromit. In go the spark plugs. Torque setting 14.7 to 24.5. We're going to do it to 20 newton metres. Right, so what's the plan next? What's the next so protocol? Spin her up and make sure the oil's coming up. Okay, how do we do that? Is, are we doing that by turning the key? Yes, mate. Oh, right, okay, not, not, we're not so, going to do it manually. The alternator's still off, there's no water in it, it's got some oil in it. So I want to see the oil coming up out them cam bearings. Okay. Shall I connect the uh, negative? 
Yeah, just hang it on. Hang the negative on. It's safe. It won't spark because it's got no cam sensor. There she goes. Right, here we go. Spin her over. Yeah, you're looking for oil coming out of them sort of places. Okay. Onto the cams. Yeah, sort of. Just coming out of the bearings. That's what you're looking for. Yeah. You need your light. I do need my light. Here we go. I said I'd do it for long anyway. If it doesn't come up soon, I'll just forget about that. No, yeah, did it come up? Looks like it. That'll do. So what was the purpose of us doing that? What was the purpose of that? To see if the oil was coming up some. We've had the oil pump off, haven't we? Yep, and it is, which is good news. Yeah. Rightio, let's put that rocker cover on. On goes the rocker cover. We've put some Durco on there as well, on the gasket. Bad practice, don't do it. Do the bloody job properly, not like what we're doing. Bunch of bloody amateurs. Talking of amateurs, Mike Terry looking down on us. It'll soon bolts. be lunchtime. Bolts, 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 bolts. Uh, Mike Terry, excellence. School of excellent entertaining. We're now pretty much reversing what we've been doing. The uh, coils are back in place. All this pipe work is now clipped back in. This clip's all back in. Top's down. It's time to put the alternator back in, which uh, could prove a little bit tricky. Actually, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. Alternator's in. Now it's time to put the water pump pulley cover on. On goes the belt. Remember, we put it on the wing mirror facing the way that it goes back on. That was a Pete Coupland top tip. I am filling the radiator back up the cool. Engine mounting has gone back on. Uh, we have taken the jack out from underneath the engine as well. Putting these wires back on and effectively it'll be ready to spin up. We're in a position then to start it up. I've hung the battery lead on, taken that glove off there so we can get some compression. Go on then. Well, I was expecting that rattle. What was the rattle? Timing chain tension of filling up with oil. Just filling itself up. I hate to say it, but I can't hear the shushing. It's gone. I can hear that wine now. It's solved the problem. Ah, but might it only last until after tea? Yes. So, that's, yeah. The shushing noise is gone. The shushing noise is gone. There is a little bit of a whine. You can tell where the shushing noise was. It's still there, but not like it was. You can hear a... That's the shushing noise. And that's the noise, but it's gone. Well, it's not like it was, is it? But why does it do it? Definitely not loud like it was. No, it's definitely solved the problem. I like you say, but it's how long there. for? Sounds to me like it's a bit of a uh, feature. But it's certainly not, well, we'll know when your mother is it, won't we? Yes, let's face it. That chain that we took Have off- you got a video of the noise? Did 70,000 miles. Yeah. That chain yeah. is brand spanking new. It was the original one though, wasn't it? So, it, c it must be better. It has to be better. The shushing noise. It's gone, it's fixed it, hasn't it? Well, should we tell your mum it's not fixed it and just leave it outside? <laughs> <laughs> That's 80 pounds, please. Tell your mum we've not fixed it. We've not fixed it. You let, you let her live with it. But we've got some content. A shadow of the noise. Yeah, but there's still a noise. Yeah, you can hear there's a, that's... Noise is sort of there, but not like it was. Do you think that it's a noise that is always there? Well, that's what the forums say. Monday yeah. I Some cars are worse than others. 
Probably because they need a new timing belt, timing chain. No, they're a bit like it, so it says. I'm not going to worry, but it's definitely not like it was. No. Sure. Is it? As you say, how long for? We shall soon find out. Oh, well. Now put the airbox the back Napa in. The Nappet haters say it'll last 20 miles. Sorry? The Nappet haters says it'll last 20 miles on yes. the internet last night. Airbox has gone back on. We need to do a little bit of a repair to part of it. Excuse me, what are you uh, bodging that with tiger well, seal for? Because it was bodged when I got the bloody job. Uh, yeah, it's got a small crack. It was stuck in with our TV. In the, um, in the piece. Yeah. I wonder how much one of those actually is oh, yeah. to replace. You can see the crack. And I can see the crack when you bent over. Oh, thank you. It's in here. I am disappointed that we managed to do this whole project without using the hydraulic press. I would have thought there'd have been a need for that. Pretty much back together under the engine. We need to uh, top the oil up. And the coolant will need settling cool down. So we'll get it on the deck, get the under trays back on. I think it's time for some lunch, first and foremost. You've been sitting there masticating while I've been walking. I beg your pardon? You've masticating? Oh yeah, I had some uh, lovely Thai chilli rice snacks. Sitting there really crunching while I was walking. Yeah, but you're going to have something nice that I can't eat. It's weigh-in day for me today. Oh, is it? Yeah, I've had a naughty week. <laughs> yeah. So here is the noise afterwards. Let's get me microphone in there. It certainly fixed the problem. Hey, guess what? What? We're not wasting our time then. I wish we'd diagnosed it properly in the first place. <laughs> Uh, we took it to Hyundai. The master technician said, never seen anything like that before, No, he just mate. said, I, I, I've got no and idea. And to be fair to the chap, I think he was a recent acquisition as a master tech. Fair enough. But the Renault... Yeah. It the wasn't Renault. like some old git who's been doing Renaults for 15 years. The, the Hyundai master tech had no idea. It could have been the VVC items. It could have been the VVC solenoid. It could have been... Well, no, we diagnosed the belt, but we found out the problem was the timing change. I've been living with a bugger for two years, and it's finally got on my nerves. Uh, things that we've got to worry about. Napa timing chain. Yeah. Lots of people saying they like cheese. Lots of people saying we'll be doing... Well, I love cheese, it, Me too, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lots of people saying that uh, we're going to be doing the project again in a couple of years. If we are, well, the least video I'm, is coming to the channel in two years. At least I know what I'm doing then. At least we know what we're doing and we know if we get that shushing noise again. As soon as it happens, I shall remember, shan't I? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to put in the video, you filling the oil up and us filling the coolant up and doing all that sort of stuff. No. I'm going to say that that is... A fish. A fix. That is job done. Are you happy with the work that we've done? I have no concerns whatsoever. It's taken us four hours, really, um, considering we started yesterday. Had a bit of lunch, had a bit of a cup of tea in the process. We've had the production crew here. We've had a fuss with Crystal, the inspector. By the time we've put all the tools away, topped the oil up, put it on the deck, put the under tray on, and got it all back out and Mum done a test drive, it's going to be another hour, so a five hour job. Um, if you was in the garage trade still, you didn't have a production crew in your way, and you were doing that for a customer. No, how... I, bet, I bet the bosses would be expecting you to do that in two and a half hours. I, I, was, going to say, I was going to say three, yeah. so you'd be saying that's a, that's a two and a half hour job. I reckon the bosses would be wanting that in two and a half hours. Do you think you could do it in two and a half hours? Yeah, but you wouldn't piss about talking everything up, would you? <laughs> You'd just go air ratchet. There you go. Um, so you're happy? Blooming over the moon, Gromit. Excellent news. It shut it up anyway, hasn't it? It has shut it up, yeah. There's still a bit to do, as we've said. But from us, doing a timing chain replacement on the Hyundai, it's solved the shushing noise, and for now, it's fixed the problem. If you've enjoyed the video and you've enjoyed the process, thumbs up please if you haven't already done so. Uh, let us know in the comments down below. What do you reckon? Napa timing chain, we're going to be doing it next week. 
or have you never had any problems? Did you think that that was going to solve the problem or did you think it was something else? And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Till next time, have a great day. Double thumbs up from Dad. Uh, you're happy? I'm bubbling over, mate. I enjoyed that. That was a good, uh, good couple of days this Bank Holiday Monday. Till next time, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Bubbling over. I genuinely hope you've enjoyed this video. I've selected a couple more from my channel for you that I think that you might like here. Give them a click and it will take you to the next video. Don't forget to hit subscribe to always stay up to date with what we're getting up to.